HP. Thinkers are great, but doers change the world. In the developing world, the high cost of medical equipment means medical workers don't have an affordable process for testing patients. It's been a fundamental obstacle to adequate health care for hundreds of millions of people. But now a scientist and a longtime biotech CEO have partnered up to put cheap and easy medical tests in the palm of your hand. Could you show me some new dyes that we could use? Una Ryan spent years at top jobs in biotechnology, where she tackled massive problems in the developing world, from vaccines to drinking water. When I was a very small child, about five years old, I set out to save lives in the noble way that children do. And then I, of course, went to university. And so I've been struggling to find the right technology and the right business model to uh, actually do something useful. When she met Harvard professor George Whitesides, she realized she may have found a way to help millions of people. Whitesides, a world-renowned chemist, came up with a simple test for several common diseases. If you were imagining a diagnostic system, something that had to do with information, what's the cheapest and most familiar thing that you could think about? And of course, it's probably newsprint. All you need is a little tiny piece of paper the size of a postage stamp. Costs virtually nothing. So Ryan licensed the technology and formed Diagnostics for All with the goal of bringing the technology to the developing world. And paper has some amazing properties. If you spill a fluid on paper, everybody knows that it will spread out. And that is wicking. What we do with microfluidics is really direct the fluid down particular channels. We make a pattern on the computer and then we print that pattern using a desktop printer um, and a solid wax ink. And we then heat it so that the wax will now go all the way through to the back. So we now have channels that the fluid can flow between them. And so we can channel plasma from blood or fluids from urine or saliva. And at the little reservoirs at the end, we spot in uh, reagents, things that will give us a test. You prick the finger with a lancet, squeeze the finger, and without any further effort, with no electricity, no pump, the fluid, the plasma in the blood, will wick into these reaction sites. And we will get a color reaction, which we can read by eye. That whole process costs less than a cent. The tool could have an enormous impact on reducing the side effects of drugs given to control HIV AIDS. Many people in the developing world who have HIV AIDS will, if they're lucky, be on antiretrovirals. And these are wonderful drugs, but some of them tend to damage the liver. But now, for a penny, one of Whiteside's little squares can test for liver failure. Patrick Beatty is a scientist at DFA. This is for one of our liver enzymes, which is AST. Now, if something starts damaging your liver, and if it goes undetected, it'll eventually kill them because their liver will fail. Here, Beatty demonstrates how the test would respond to blood high in these liver enzymes. So I'm spotting down this dye and in a patient that has liver damage, it'll actually turn pink. It's a revolutionary new approach to a problem that has plagued public health workers around the world. In the usual way that in the developed world, we try to develop something that's appropriate for the developing world is to start with what we use and then simplify it and cut out parts. The paper diagnostics really started from, from the idea of trying to make it as simple and cheap as you could at the beginning. In the developing world, actually how healthcare is delivered is by healthcare workers who usually ride a, a bicycle or a motorized cycle. And one of the beauties is that he can give a result and uh, make a decision immediately, but also we will have a record that can be sent by camera phone to a physician at some remote site. And the data could be mined in the future to give you 
very valuable information about hot spots where diseases are developing, new strains are emerging, or even where um, counterfeit drugs may be being distributed and people are not responding properly. Mm -hmm. Could we run off another 20 or so? Sure, absolutely. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is funding trials of DFA's tests at a Boston hospital before they are distributed in Africa and South America. Should it all be put together in a single piece of paper and you tear it off as you use it? We just don't know until we begin to put them in the field and test them with people who will say either, this is terrific, it's exactly what I need, or I can't handle these things, the wind keeps blowing them away and I'm not that clever with my fingers. Una Ryan is anxious to see if the tests hold up in remote rural areas. Imagine a mother coming in with a child with a fever. The child is sick. You need to distinguish HIV, pneumonia, malaria, dengue, some of these uh, likely diseases. And you don't want to have people come into a booth or a clinic that says AIDS testing. You want them to be able to come in when it's just part of um, a whole battery of tests. I'm really excited to get the hep C test going. Ryan anticipates widespread applications for the test to help diagnose everything from diabetes to toxic poisons. What we've done here is to start as a nonprofit dedicated to providing these diagnostics for the developing world, but we certainly will allow them to be used um, in for-profit activities. When something new comes along, Technology is actually very good at saying this works, let's go use it for something. So that if they do work in Mumbai or in Nairobi or something of that sort, if they're simple enough and cheap enough that they can be used there, they can certainly be used in various places in the United States, in Europe, and Japan. And this is truly diagnostics for all.